free or it's making a small amount of money mm. and it's running in the background totally automated. It depends on your specialty yeah. I think uh, our, our specialty is such that in um, ENT the, in the procedures that are done in clinic they do it in and out via a scoping um, so it's very difficult. You can try no, an initial consultation fee though just, just to see them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Pay so your consulta consultation fee up front, that's it. Yeah. Mm. That's what, you know, okay. there's some really cool stuff you can do like this. Yeah. Can I ask you something about that? Mm. I, um, when I put my name in Vivek Wood with Urology, I see my picture first, and then I see quite a few pictures of other urologists in my area. Yes, and sir. then I've just put a name of one of my colleagues, Mr. Jaganathan Urology, and those same people, I get his, well, my picture doesn't come up, but they're, so does that mean <laughs> they're tagging onto my name? No, I mean, that's just, is that Google Images? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. their leaks. So that's just, the hosp it's just hospitals. yeah. I mean, it's just um, that's just going to be one of those things that is. But is you know, how come when I put my name in, their pictures show up? Because Google, but when I put their name in, my picture doesn't show up. It's just the way Google have indexed. It, it, it's Google's algorithm. It's their, you know, the way they've built their listings in the same way that it would come up in a normal. So their web listings listing. are higher. Maybe, but it's more just a case of it's how closely related it thinks you are and things like that it's the, the google images thing is certainly nothing i would look at in terms so it's of not like they've done with it um, no, no you no, can do no. that oh. you can do that by changing various tags and stuff but it's what's happening is the data is being scraped off the private hospitals and the Sorry, say that again, please. what's the data is being scraped off say the, the local hosp private hospital or the nhs hospital and then u5 urologists are grouped together mm. so when you search for one another picture comes up as well that's one of the ways it can happen oh. right break time gentlemen Thank lunch um, I would like to ask you if you wouldn't mind um, to say look, ask a answer a couple of questions to camera Ben will be asking you about how useful you found it um, I would really appreciate that just you know give your honest thoughts uh, whether it's been helpful whether it hasn't what stuff you once covered stuff that we did cover didn't cover whatever just some general thoughts would be appreciated yeah, if we can get on with that now, yeah, that'd be good. Um, and then come to lunch. We'll be running till um, two o'clock for lunch, so we've got plenty of time. Cool. Deb. I emailed you some Ooh. questions. Do you want to just have a quick look? Did you? I emailed you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. I assumed it was going to be done at the end of the day. Because I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I thought it was, well, yeah, but that, that yes, but, okay, it's your testimony, but yeah, I want to get the questions right, so, um, that's what we need, yeah. Have you just got the one card? No, I've got the one You know, I, I, this is my expertise. I'm, I'm, you know, I live and breathe golf. 
I love golf and for years I've been helping golfers do better kind of thing. And you talk about this is your passion and this is how you help people get better. You know, that's your focus, that's your interest. Um, you're giving them the reason by virtue of your content. You're saying, look, you, you know, we like, you like, here's my, what I have to say, mm -hmm. you like me and here's that, that is the reason. It's about relationships. Um, and you do that over time with the email marketing and you do that you know, in your content on your page as well. Right. What should we talk about? You mentioned we were going to talk about GP networking. So. Okay. Let's do that. Oh, come on. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. You're right, Jenny? I need a drink, actually. Is there a spare glass? Yeah, yeah. Ah, thank you. Right, so... Networking with GPs. This is, of course, the um, the one thing all consultants in private practice know, claim to know, tool they use to grow their practices, and done well, i.e., effectively, i.e., yielding results, can yield some very, very good results. Okay. Um, but if there are some critical elements to it, the critical elements are this. Um, <coughs> first and foremost, you've got to be a bit of a warm and fuzzy person who's very willing and happy to meet lots of strange GPs and chat with them. Strange people, not strange GPs. And that isn't something we all have in our nature and personality. I don't. Um, but if you do, you can, it can work very, very well for you. And as we've said, in terms of other ways to grow your private practice, the, the most effective strategy that you don't do or do badly, is, yeah, it's a disaster. You know, if, you cut, if you're forcing yourself to do it, you won't like it, and you don't do it well, it's not going to work for you and you'll hate it. Yeah? So uh, if, it's something you, if, you, if it's something you enjoy meeting new people and talking to them with that sort of subtext, then great. So the first thing I'd say is that the GPs used to be very much the gatekeepers of private practice, but they really are not anymore, and they haven't been for a long time. Um, people now go to go Dr. Google first. They Google their symptoms. They Google their um, diagnosis, if they have one. They Google who they can see, and they either then refer themselves to see that clinician of their choice after visiting their website and sniffing around, or they see their GP and say, send me to... Mr. Jones. They much less say, hi doc, my knee's been bothering me for so, so long now, can you send me to see someone? Who do you recommend? They turn up asking. Those, um, and what your goal should be, of course, is twofold. First to be the guy they turn to, they go to the GP and say, send me to see doc Dr. Smith. That's your first and foremost goal. Secondly, if you can, you need to be first and foremost in the GP's mind so that when somebody presents with a knee problem, mental health problem, whatever, that they think of you to send you to them. Now, one of the troubles is there's often um, relationships that are built up between consultants and GPs. Um, not to say they're necessarily underhand or anything, but you've got a consultant you've been established for a long time, maybe go out and play golf with them take them out for drinks, having a lot, you know, they've got a solid relationship there and it's very hard to break into, um, into that so that you become the next guy that they refer to instead. But it can be done with persistence. And GP educational meetings are a very good way of doing that. The first thing when setting it up is to ask yourself what you're going to talk about and then ask somebody who actually knows because you'll get the wrong answer. You'll talk about robotic prostate surgery or you'll talk about the biomechanics of the knee joint and something random that's irrelevant. And 
there are two approaches. Either is to ask the GPs what they want to learn about. What, you know, what do you want to know about eyes? Tell me what your problems are. You know, how can I help you in eye surgery? Um, and that, I, that's a strategy I do recommend. Just ask them, talk to them. You know, what is it I can help you with? Uh, and secondly, to ask yourself what their problem patients are, because in every specialty there are heart sick patients. Yeah? In, in general surgery, um, it's the non-specific abdominal pain, non-organic abdominal pain. Um, you, they've been investigated every which way you can find no cause, and they keep coming back. And all you've got to do is to accept it, really. Um, in neurology, it's headaches of unknown origin, non-organic cause anyway. Uh, and every specialty has these sorts of problems. And the GPs, of course, get the vast majority of those patients all the time. Um, so they filter a lot of them out before they come to you. And then they get sick of them and just send them anyway. So if you've got to ask yourself, what are the GP's problems and how can we help them with that? So the management... Who, this doesn't just need to be about medicine. It could be anything, like what pathways exist that they can refer them to. It doesn't have to be a, I'm going to tell you about, I don't know, heart failure. It might be... It, it could be about anything. pathways exist that you can refer a patient into that will take your you know, problem away from them. Yes, but it's, it's ideally relevant to you and your specialty, isn't it? Um, and really, you know, they, all the pathways end up to you as a cardiologist mm -hmm. for respiratory stroke, you know, query cardiac pain, query cardiac symptoms, they end up at your door. So what you're basically saying, what, one of the things you could be talking about is exactly how to make a referral exactly to you. the specifics of it. Yeah, and you could very overtly say to them, so listen, I, I appreciate there's lots of patients out there with, I'll stick to what I know, non-specific abdominal pain. Look, it, and it can be tough. Look, if there's any problem, don't worry, just send it to me. I know sometimes the juniors might be a bit difficult about it or whatever. I'll have a word with them. But send them my way. It's fine. I don't mind. It's okay. Yeah? Because they, they'll be on the end of the, the juniors given that, uh, and they'll feel bad about it, and there's, it's, it's friction, so they won't like it. So if you just say to them very clearly, look, don't worry about it. That's good. Next thing is obviously to organise. So address that issue. Um, Tell them, find out what they want to know about and talk about that subject. You next need to promote it and organise it well in advance. Get as many details of practice as you possibly can and get in touch with them. Make a real effort to promote it. You have to sell it, okay? Um, and you have to sell it in the same way as you have to sell your services to a patient. Yeah? You still have to sell it to them. If you just say it's on, they say, what? Well, okay, well, GPs are busy people. Um, with their own problems as well as we are. So that you need to make it worth their while and encourage them to come. And that will require several contacts. So send them a letter, invite them personally by name if you can, pick up the phone, get in touch with them, have a word with the practice secretary, do lots of, make lots of repeated efforts to get in touch with them to invite them along. Okay? The simplest way to start is with your friends. If you know a handful of GPs, which you all will, at least in your region, just say, look, come along, we're having this, we're having this meeting, I want to talk to you about this, and please bring some of your buddies. Next thing is, please, please, please hold it somewhere nice. Yeah. Not some shitty seminar room in the hospital. Find a hotel, find a pub. Often, often decent pubs will have a back room which are completely free to use because they know people, if you bring a few people on, go to the bar afterwards, yeah? Hotels, the same, free meeting rooms, place to go. Hold it somewhere nice, all right? Give them some decent refreshments and make sure the GPs know that it's going to be worth their while. Their while. Otherwise, they will often send their practice nurses and random people along, if, if anyone at all, who are there simply for a jolly, and obviously they're no use to you at all. You know. Now, your goal is to get, firstly, is to provide a, a talk that's of relevance to them, and then you've got to get them there. Okay, so make it as desirable for them to attend Firstly, because of where you're holding it and what you're doing. Secondly, about what you're going to be talking about. The next thing is that you want, I say, is to make sure they get something out of it. And firstly, you need to obviously ask them what they want, ask them what their problems are, but then explain. There's, I, I've interviewed a couple of GPs before, and they are very open to sending you patients. And if that's what you want, talk to them and say so. 
individually um, as opposed to at the meeting. But say to them, look, you know, I want to help you out with any problem patients, any difficulty you have, just send them my way. If you do happen to see any patients with knee problems or whatever that need to be, that want to be seen privately, I'd be delighted if you'd send them to me as well. They're very open and receptive to that. And it also gets rid of a lot of the, the unspoken thing at these meetings, that you're just being chummy and being my mate because you want me to send you private patients. Get it clear out in the open. I wouldn't do it as a group, but I'd, you know, speak to people one on one. So if you know, just send them my way. Do you need to say that? Though? It's obvious why. It's pretty obvious why you're there, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's not nice, is it? No, but do you need to? Do you need to actually spell it out and say, "Send me your private patients"? I would just ask, and I've interviewed several GPs about what they feel about consultants approaching them, and they've all been very open about it. Yeah, they've all said, like, if, if, you know, how do you feel if consultants get in touch with you, blah, 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 etc. Yeah, that's fine, you know. Yeah. I mean, what I do is on my title page, I've got my name and I put my NHS base, my private hospital. But I've n I never mention the word private practice or private hospital during my talk because I don't want to push it in their face. I wouldn't talk about it at the talk. The, yeah. uh, the purpose of the talk is, what is the, the purpose of the talk is Education. twofold, isn't it? It's to raise your profile with them by giving them something of value to them. So you want to help them with their problems. That is going to be the focus. So talk about the non-specific abdominal pain, the headaches, the whatever it is in your specialty that is their heart sink issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and so make it useful to them in that respect. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing is so that they see and know you and they get to see and know you as a decent bloke, a friendly bloke is approachable. Mm -hmm. um, and when the next referral comes up, that it's your name they think of. Now, an, a former boss of mine when I was a trainee used to hold regular summer barbecues and invite all the GPs round, and it all seemed a bit icky to me. Mm. But, if, but he clearly was friendly with a lot of them, so it's a friendly thing, that's good. Mm. He played golf with a lot of them, went out for drinks with them, and that's great. So if you're the kind of warm, cuddly, fuzzy person who's very happy to do that, then do it. And it, it will work very well, but it is not a quick process because you're trying to form relationships with people and that takes time. And if you try and rush it, you'll be seen as the, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you're being crowded and it's like, you know, the, the, the mad ex-girlfriend who won't leave you alone kind of thing, you know. So you need to take it slowly. You need to actively promote your meeting, but the key thing is getting their contact details on an ongoing basis, so you know, so you can start off promoting the meeting, find out who's there, build up a database of people, and then follow up with them afterwards. This is really important. You need to follow up them, sort of pre-follow up, so to speak, follow up before the meeting to get them there. Then once they're there and afterwards, you need to follow up them um, on numerous occasions to so remind them of your existence, ask them what they thought of the talk, was it helpful, did I, you know, did I answer your questions? Is there anything else you'd like me to talk about? Should I have changed the emphasis, the focus? Because you'll get it, you, 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 what you'll give them is something that's roughly useful and helpful, but it may have missed the mark for various reasons. And that way, the next time you'll do it, you'll do it better. Get the tracking in there. So if you can come up with some way of saying, look, if, there, if you've got any referrals, just go, go to my website and this, and this address, or email me at this address, or use this number, give them a business card, and then you will know how many calls are coming through, and you can see from that point how successful it's been. But again, don't expect miracles, because it will take time. But don't be afraid, as I say, to ask them to send you patients. Now, some GPs are ideologically opposed to private practice. And more GPs, as a proportion compared to consultants and private uh, consult consultants, are opposed to private practice, partly because of the nature of the specialty, and that's fine. So don't be surprised if you get rebuffed by the odd by the odd GP, um, and some you never see um, because they're out there, and there's nothing. And and that's fine, you know. Each, we all got, it, but you know, it's it's just one of those things to expect. Now, the advantage, obviously, is the, the, the disadvantage is this takes time. Um, 
but the huge advantage is that, is that once you form a relationship with these people, they get to know you, like you and trust you and respect you. They will speak to their colleagues. It starts to, word starts to get out between GPs about you being a good chap and all the rest of it. They'll send you patients, they'll see good results. You'll write to them with a personal letter um, saying thank you very much. I'll say a handwritten letter is perfect. Dear Jim Jones, thank you very much for sending that private, sending Julie <coughs> Jones to see me privately. Um, I'll send you a formal letter about you know, what we talked about and everything. Um, that'll come, but I just want to drop you a quick note to say thank you. Who could possibly object to that? There's nothing the slightest bit icky at all about it, and people will appreciate it. I just want to do, we start the sentence that I say, I just want to do, drop the quick note to say thank you so much, yeah. or, or thank you so much, yeah. Just, a ve just very, very simple, straight into the point. You could get it printed off and sent, or you know, sent, by, sent by your secretary, but I would write it by hand. Because it's, it's then it's obvious you've made the effort. It's so much more personal. Just don't think so, but my, my wife is a bit crap anyway. Crappy biro, Microsoft a bit. I, I don't know. My new shy. Might not make a difference. It's the fact that you've made the effort to write. Even no. if you did actually print it off from your printer, from a computer printer, and got it sent out, and it's all typed out and not even signed. I mean, that, that's poor because it's like anonymous, sort of. Even it's got the name on there, but it's still better than nothing. Would you say something? I hope you found it, Mr. Jones. I hope you found the. You know, I hope you found the thing useful, or so just, just thank you so much for sending. I tried to write it. I couldn't think what to write. So, what should we write? Thank you so much for sending Mr. <laughs> Mr. Jones to see them in private rooms. Um, with what's it? Uh, a formal letter. I'll send you. Yeah, exactly. I'll send a formal letter about you know uh, our, our pl the plan will follow, but I just wanted to drop you a quick note to say thank you. Jim, you, without trying to be cynical, you don't think that's ass looking on you? And might go the other way. No, to me that seems perfectly, <coughs> perfectly straightforward, honest, to the point. Does it seem ask well, to any of you? I suppose think it's, let's say I refer a patient to I don't know, a gastroenterology colleague, and then they wrote a letter back to me to say thanks for sending me the patient. I go, oh, that's nice of them. Mm. Yeah. So it's the same. Just treat yourself as an issue. Yeah. The thing is, you guys, you know, will be getting far. Of it, but I'll be like, oh, nice is it good yeah, that's it. Just thank you very much. I that's all you're my, saying. Is it, I write to my colleagues by first name. If the few GPs, is it any harm like to GPs by the first name? If you only if you know them. Though. Well, no. If you feel comfortable, if you're not comfortable with it, then then just put Doctor Jones. But if, if you, you know are comfortable, person, then it's dear Jim or whatever. Yeah. It's it's up to you. If you know. Them. It's up to you. What I mean, we're all different. You know, if you feel comfortable doing it one way, then do that. If I've spoken to them once, then we can have a nice chat. Yeah. I'll put their first name if I've never spoken to them. All right. My first yeah. year, yeah. I, my first year, I used to spend a lot of time going with the, every patient. I'd go on Google, find out the first name, and then write, you know, by the first name. But then I thought, yeah, I stopped it now. I don't think it helps. I don't think I'd do it if I didn't hadn't met them before. Yes. Because mm. they're not they don't look you up on Google and say, <coughs> you know, deal yeah. with it. See, GPs, just like the rest of us in clinical practice, get far more cranky complaint letters and unpleasantness than they get thank yous. Because if you've had a good experience, you might think, oh, I'll drop them a note and say thank you to the consultant, the, the team's looking after you. But most people forget about it and don't do it. But if you've been got your nose out of joint for whatever reason, things haven't got well or whatever, you'll fire off a cranky letter. And GPs are the same. It's not that, it's not that you're a rubbish consultant because you've got... Yeah, uh, 10 complaints in six months, whatever it might be, and then three thank yous. The fact is, people always send far fewer thank yous than their certain complaints. And GPs are no different. So somebody actually saying, thank you, I appreciate it, is going to be very welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Try it. If you, as I say, you'll either feel, I would be perfectly happy and comfortable doing that, and if somebody sent me a thank you letter, I'd be delighted. Mm. But uh, again, it partly depends on your own personality as well. I wouldn't want to hold networking GP meetings, but that reflects my personality, not the fact that it doesn't work. And again, um, if I were in your situation forced myself to do it, it would be a very stilted, difficult meeting. <laughs> I wouldn't do it very well, in other words, and it would probably be very uncomfortable. That surprised me, Deb, because your profession is very much a people person, isn't it? Well, general surgery? No, I mean, what are you doing now? Um, private, you know, you're getting on with GPs, you're getting on with physicians, surgeons. 
and forming relationships. So you wouldn't be doing the sort of work you're doing if you weren't people's person. I don't know. I don't think that's true. Um, and you know, we all. No, I don't think so. You know, I, I mean, I've got. This isn't about me. I've got plenty of very good friends that I hang around with, but I'm very selective about my friends. And I'm sure all of you are as well. But some people, as I say, are a lot more warm and fuzzy. You know, you see them all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. so there's some very warm and fuzzy and touchy-feely, cuddly, I call it, people. Great. But, you know, some people are less so. And if you're one of those, you know, reach-outy kinds of people, this is the sort of thing you do very, very well at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's in your nature. And that's fine. So yes, yeah, so the pros are, you know, as I say, you know, you could, once you form relationships, they can get very strong, and they're relatively easy to keep going. A little thank you note, you know, let's go out for a beer now and then. You're friends, yeah, and it's very easy, and they can be very strong, and you can get, generate many, many patients over time. The cons, of course, that it takes a certain personality. Um, it can feel false. Um, and it takes time and it's slow. And um, those are the big things, really, I would say. The trouble is, of course, also that in the end, only a few GPs will be sending you patients. And we end up with the problem of the Parthenon with just one or two mm. pillars that can be kicked over. So, <coughs> by all means, go down the GP networking route, educational meeting route. Um, some of you will find it works ex astonishingly well, and that will reflect p your personality. But however you do it, the key thing is to sell the, uh, d give them what they want, not what you think they want. And if you don't know, find out. Um, sell the event, sell the meeting, promote the meeting, repeatedly to get them there. Build up a database of, consult uh, of GPs that you can tell them when the next meeting is happening. Mm. Try and build in some tracking so that you can see what patients are coming out of it. It's difficult, but it can be done. And then the follow-up. Make sure you find out, was it mm. useful to them? Did they get what they want out of it? What's the next thing you, they'd like you to talk about? Mm. And don't be a cheapskate. Hold it somewhere nice. Give them some nice food. You can get drug reps in and to sponsor it and whatnot. In hospital sponsor them. Yeah, you're, yeah, at yeah. The, you're at the request of the hospital because there's 50, 100 consultants and different specialties all vying for their time, and they've got one slot every month. And there's, they've got a, they don't want to call it a mini surgeon. So it's definitely a good idea to actually just try and get as just do your own thing, worth doing your own stuff. Yeah, because that way you can do it correctly. Yeah, yeah. And, and that way you've got control. And you, I mean, if there's, I'm sure we could if there's, if, the if, you, if you're the GP. Maybe just, yeah, just ask one practice and say, do you want to go out? You know, well, just start with the people you know. Yeah. Or start with, with the friends, people you know. Absolutely. We'll just and the good thing is there'll be 10, 10 GPs you know, another 10 you know. Yeah. Well, I'd like GPs. to introduce you to my friend. Yeah. So now you've, been, you've met yeah. 10 new GPs yeah. and you so it goes. Oh, just a buffet. I mean, we, no, it's not that much money, is it, to, to organise some food and stuff for 10 yeah. people? Yeah, I mean, you could even, you could get drug reps to, to do it, but I mean, you know, make sure you specify, this is what I don't want Sainsbury sandwiches and stuff. Take them somewhere nice. And, you know, think of all the hot, the ghastly drug-sponsored meetings you've had. They're awful, yeah? yeah. yeah so I mean, if you've got control... Really, you know, if someone else is paying for it, I'll just ask if I'll come. Is it, do they have to declare? So if, you, if you, I'm taking people out, right, for dinner, yep. say, mates of mine, who's a GP, and then he's so referred to a private patient, is there a declaration? Do they have to make a declaration? No. No, if, if you, you're not allowed to have a formal relationship okay. or any kind of, or so any, whether it's overt or covert, you can't yeah. have that. Um, but if he chooses to send you patients and he's free to send them wherever he wants, mm -hmm. and there's no formal relationship, no quid pro quo, no, no one done, hand washing the other kind of thing. Over the pretense, and I, I have to give them food. And no, you're holding an educational meeting. Yeah. They're perfectly free to send patients in every, any direction they choose. Yeah. You've asked them to send you patients. You just say, you know, if, if you don't have any private patients, I'll be delighted to see them. That's it. One personal thing I found, when I initially started, I did really big talks by 80, 90 GPs. Totally useless. And now I go more to practices and I do a lunch, meet and lunch. <coughs> Five, six GPs in a practice, you know, nice like this, nice and cosy, one-to-one -one chatting. 
and I think that's much more... Yeah, that can work, that, exactly. It doesn't have to be, let's all have a jolly and come to the hotel. Calling around to visit them is a very good idea. But you'll need to talk to them about something. I mean, would you advise direct, so like, you know, there are no, 50 talk. GP practices, right? Mm. Of which I've been to talk to about four, maybe, in the 50 practices in my catchment region. Mm. And it's going to take me, if I just do it in the way I'm doing at the moment, with waiting for hospital to take me there, because there's only certain days that they do, it's going to take me 15 years, right? So, and all the other stuff. So what else can I do? 